So let's get started. Here we have a plant. These are types of plants, of course, perhaps in your garden. Perhaps your mother has a garden. She has these kinds of plants. A plant, what is a plant exactly? A plant is a living thing that grows in the ground, okay? We are living things too, human beings and animals, but we don't live in the ground, right? Plants can't move. They are stuck in the ground. So plants grow in the ground. They need, or it, a plant needs air, water, and sunlight. So there are three things that a plant needs to grow. And those, of course, are air, water, and sunlight. So how does a plant get these things? In this lesson, we'll talk about the different parts of the plant that help the plant get air, water, and sunlight. Okay, moving on. Here we have the root. This is the part of the plant that you normally, you don't see. It's in the ground. In the previous picture, <clears throat> we only saw this part of the plant here, right? But we didn't see this part. This part are the roots. And these are typical looking roots for a plant. They have many different uh, parts or many different like arms going into the ground. What does the root do for the plant? The roots of a plant take in, take in water and hold the plant in the soil. Before, we saw that a plant needs air, water, and sunlight to grow. So the roots are the part of the plant that helps the plant take in water. Okay, and also the second thing that the roots do is they hold the plant in the soil. So these roots are like strong legs, right? But in the ground. So the plant is, does not fall over. <laughs> If there's a strong wind, it stays sturdy and strong. And for a tree, for example, that's very heavy, that's very important, right? So roots help the plant stay strong in the soil. Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> let's talk about the next part of the plant, which is the stem. Okay, we started at the bottom, the roots we can't see, but now we're coming up and we can see the stem is here. What does the stem do for the plant? A stem carries food and water, so carries food and water through the plant. So the roots down here, they're taking in water, they're also taking in food from the, from the dirt, from the soil, and the stem carries that food up, right, to the leaves, okay, through the plant. It holds up the plant, so the stem is like the trunk of your body, right? It is the main part of the plant. In, in many plants, uh, but it's like the structure of the plant, and it holds the plant above the soil, and we call that the stem. Okay, let's move on. Here we have a leaf. These are the top parts of the plant. You see these big green things. Most plants have these. What are they? Of course, they are the leaf. Now, be careful. Leaf is singular, one, one leaf, but of course, plants have many many leaves. So if we talk about singular leaf or plural leaves, leaves. Okay, so here we have leaf and what does the leaf do? A leaf takes in. Again, we have that verb, right? Takes in. It takes in light and air. So it takes in light and air, two things that the leaf does for the plant. It takes in these things that help the plant grow. Leaves help the plant get food. So we can see that the plant gets food basically from two parts we've talked about already. The first part we talked about were the roots, right? The roots take in water and some food from the from the soil. Also, leaves take in air and sunlight. And those are the things that help the plant grow to be a bigger plant. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Some plants are very beautiful, aren't they? In the springtime, you can see many different colors. And these colors are made by flowers. So many plants and trees, uh, which trees are plants, of course, have flowers, and the flowers can be many different colors, very beautiful. What do flowers do for the plant? 
Plants have flowers. Flowers make fruit. Well, that's what they do for us, right? Because we eat the fruit. But what does the fruit do for the plant? We'll find out soon. Flowers are very beautiful, as I've said, right? Well, what is it about flowers and fruit that is good for the plant? Okay. Well, these flowers they produce fruit. Now here we see an example of fruit. These look delicious, don't they? Fruit, of course, is good for us. It's part of the plant that we eat. Some plants.、Um, these, of course, look like oranges. There are many different kinds of fruit. Fruit is the part of plant with seeds. Here we have seeds. We'll talk about later what seeds do for the plant. Apples and lemons are common types of fruit. So if you cut open an apple, I'm sure you like apples, right? Apples are very delicious, and they're good for you too. You should eat lots of apples. But if you cut open an apple, you will see seeds inside the apple. If you open a lemon, be careful when you eat a lemon; it's sour, right? But you also have to watch out for the seeds in the lemon. Okay, so plants will also produce fruit. Okay, let's move on. What is another part of the plant, especially on trees? Right, not so much small plant, but for big trees, we can see branch, a branch, plural branches. A tree has many different branches, so you can climb a tree. Right, when you want to climb a tree, if it has a lot of branches, it's a good climbing tree. But Be careful when you climb a tree. Okay, be very careful.、Um, okay, a branch is an arm like a part of a tree. So if you look at me, I've got two arms. It's like I have two branches, right? But a tree, of course, has many different branches, and these, of course, support the leaves where the tree takes in air and sunlight, as we saw before. Okay. American textbook reading. Grade One, Science, Book One. Lesson One: Parts of Plants. Plant. A plant is a living thing that grows in the ground. It needs air. Water and sunlight. Root. The roots of a plant take in water and hold the plant in the soil. Stem. A stem carries food and water through the plant. It is the body of the plant. It holds up the plant. Leaf. A leaf takes in light and air. Leaves help the plant get food. Flower. Plants have flowers. Flowers make fruit. Flowers are very beautiful. Fruit. Fruit is the part of the plant with seeds. Apples and lemons are common types of fruit. Branch. A branch is an arm-like part of a tree. Let's get started into our lesson. Here we see the life cycle, as I've described before. The life cycle is the cycle of life. It's how something grows into an adult and then dies and then. Comes back and grows again. Life all around us is going through this cycle. We can see examples of babies. We can see examples of of teenagers, for example, middle part. We can see examples in the middle part of a life, and then we see、uh, examples of things that die. This is all part of the life cycle. It's the series of changes. The series of changes. Occurring in an animal or plant, like I said, all life goes through a series of changes in、uh, the life cycle. 
Okay, what we are also going to start off with the very beginning of the life cycle for a plant. What is that? Remember in lesson one we talked about the seed and I said we would talk more about that later. It's very important. Well, that's what we're talking about now. The seed is a very important part of the life cycle. The seed is the small part of a plant. Remember what makes the seed? That's right, fruit. Inside the fruit we have seeds. So the seed is a small part of a plant from which a new plant may be grown. So the fruit that contains seeds, when we eat it, or the fruit is carried along by something else, like an animal, they open up, the seeds fall out, and then they will grow again. Some, uh, in many cases, of course, human beings will take the seeds and we will uh, put them in the ground to make them grow. A seedling, when we put the seed in the ground, after a while, if we give it uh, good ground or soil and we give it some water, what happens? A very small plant starts to grow. That is called a seedling. You guys, practice. Seedling. Seedling. A seedling is a very young plant, like a baby plant, that comes out from a seed. It's a very small uh, a plant that comes out. It's really amazing if you have time and you can watch it, but usually we don't have that kind of time. It takes some time, but if we use a video, a special video technique, and we take a picture once every once in a while, then we put it all together. It's very amazing to watch a seedling grow from a seed. Let's take a look. We have a video. Okay, see here we have many different seeds in the ground. Wow, look at that. They're growing up like little seedlings. So we have the time uh, through this photography, you know, that it's not, it doesn't grow this fast, of course. This video is taken over a long period of time and speed it up so that we can see how these seeds will grow and they will make little seedlings. They will sprout up through the ground. It's really amazing, isn't it? Okay, so what we saw there, uh, like the word that I used, sprout, right? Uh, we're using this word as a verb, right? I said these seeds will sprout up. Right now, we can imagine there's a seed under the ground here, and this seedling is sprouting up through the dirt. So if a plant sprouts, new leaves begin to grow on it. So basically, what's, it, what's happening is this seedling is growing up, and it starts to put out leaves right away. Okay, very quickly, because leaves are a very important part of the plant. Okay, now it's very important that the seed is protected, right? Uh, if the seed needs to have some kind of shell or coat around it to protect it from the elements, to protect it from insects, for example, a seed coat covers and protects a seed. So you can see it's been taken away here. This part is the seed coat. Normally, it covers the whole seed, but this seed is about to grow. So it looks like it broke off. It's going to start growing now. But if you take a look at the apple, you open up the apple, you've got the small dark brown seeds. That actually, that dark brown coloring is the coat of the seed. And this is a different kind of seed here, but it's the seed coat. It's like you put on a coat to protect yourself. That's the, exactly what this is here, a seed coat. A cone is uh, where some the seeds will grow. Now this is a special kind of cone, right? You see these in the fall and especially in the winter. If you go into the forest, into a pine forest, there are many pine trees around uh, in Korea. If you go into the forest like uh, maybe some of the national parks like Soraksan, Waraksan, Chidisan, right? You can see all of these uh, different cones on the ground and they're lying around. These are pine cones and inside the cone there are little seeds. So a cone that has many seeds is the fruit of the pine tree. So it's strange to think that this is fruit, isn't it? Of course you wouldn't eat that. <laughs> oh, it would be terrible and also it would it would hurt your mouth. But this is the type of fruit 
that a pine tree grows. So we don't eat the fruit of a pine tree, right? We eat the fruit of an apple tree or a lemon tree, but we don't eat the fruit of a pine tree. But it's still a kind of fruit, and this is the kind of fruit that a pine tree produces. And like we saw, inside the fruit are seeds. So this is a type of fruit as well. Interesting. An adult. We've talked about the seed, we've talked about the seedling, and after a long time, we have an adult. And of course, a tree takes a very, very long time to grow. Some trees are hundreds of years old, right? If you can imagine that. An adult, an adult means fully grown. So if it's an adult plant, if it's an adult dog, or if it's an adult human being, it means it is fully grown. It's in uh, the final stage of growth. It's fully grown. Lesson 2 Life Cycle of a Plant Life Cycle A life cycle is the series of changes occurring in an animal or plant. Seed A seed is the small part of a plant from which a new plant may grow. Seedling A seedling is a young plant that grows out from a seed. Sprout If a plant or seed sprouts, new leaves begin to grow on it. Seed coat A seed coat covers and protects a seed. Cone A cone that has many seeds is the fruit of the pine tree. Adult Adult means fully grown. Let's get started. There are actually six things, six things that plants need to grow big and strong. The first one is sunlight. Sunlight. What is sunlight? Well, of course, we know we have the sun. It rises every day, and it gives us light, and that is what sunlight is. Sunlight is the light, and we, of course, we have that word again, the light from the sun. We put these two words together, and we get sunlight. It's very warm, isn't it? If you go outside, let the sunlight on your body. Ah, it's very warm, very nice. That's sunlight. It helps plants to grow. It also helps us to grow a little bit. I mean, if we stay inside out of the sunlight, we're not very happy. So go out, enjoy the sunlight. It'll make you happy. Of course, if it's not too cold outside, right? Okay, so that's the first thing that plants need to grow. What's the second thing? The second thing is air. We need air too, of course, but plants need air as well. Air, if you take a look at this picture, most of this picture is air. All of this part of the picture is air, right? This is the ground. But air is the gases that surround the earth. There are many different kinds of gases that surround the earth. We use some of those gases. Plants use different gases, but they're all mixed together, and we call that air. We cannot see air, right? You can't see it. It's invisible but it is everywhere. It's in this room. It's in the room that you are in right now. And just as we breathe air, just as we need air, plants also need air. Okay, so that's the second thing that plants need. What's the third thing that plants need? Let's take a look. Water. Of course, water is very important. How do we describe water? How do we define water? Water is basically a liquid. Uh, remember, we talked about a liquid is something that, is, that can flow. It doesn't have any shape. It can move from one place to another very easily. It flows. A liquid that is necessary for life. Water is necessary for all life, not just plants. But what does water do for plants? Do plants drink water like we do? No. Plants need water uh, to move food to the parts of a plant. 
there are nutrients and you know you could say like uh, minerals and maybe you know like nutrients uh, food in the soil that the plant needs how does the plant get those minerals out of the soil it can't do it if it's dry but if it's wet the water helps move the very small minerals up through the plant and that's how plants need water in order to get the food that they need to live Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. What is the fourth thing that plants need? Let's take a look, and that is space. Of course, everything needs space, room to grow. If a plant cannot grow if the, there's no space, right? Where is it gonna grow? Especially think about a tree, right? A tree needs a lot of space to grow. So if you take a look at this picture, right, you see that there is space between the rows. Space is the area available for use. So if you have space, you have area that you can use. It is available for you to use that space, that room. If there is space, a plant can grow big and strong, right? If there's enough space between the plants, these plants can grow very large. And of course, if you think about the trees in the background, they need a lot more space, right? If there's a small tree and it's trying to grow and there's too many trees around it, that small tree cannot grow very well. It needs more space to grow big and strong, okay? So that is space. What's the next thing that plants need? The next thing is soil, right? I talked about that a little bit before. When we talked about water, we said there are many nutrients uh, there's many ingredients in the soil that plants need to grow. This looks like very good soil, right? Looks very rich and very nutritious for the plants. That's good soil right there. Soil is where plants grow. Soil is the top part of the earth. But remember, not the entire earth is covered with soil. If you go to the desert, there's no soil in the desert. It's just sand. So in order for plants to grow, we have to find very good soil. And we call it, the, it's the top part of the earth. Sometimes people call it top soil. And if it's very rich and dark brown and wet like this, that's really good soil for growing plants. Farmers really like that style. Okay, so the, the next thing that plants need is warmth. Warmth is the state or quality of being warm. Are you warm right now? That means, ah, you're comfortable, right? You're not cold, you're warm. Take a look at these plants in the picture. They look like strange plants, don't they? Actually, we can't see the plants. It looks like straw uh, things have been put over the plants. We could say that somebody, maybe a farmer or somebody who's caring for the plants, put these straw hats on top of the plant. We could say that these are like plant clothes, right? These are clothes for plants. Of course, you don't see this all the time, but what the farmer or the person who is caring for these plants, what are they doing? Why did they put these things on the plants? To keep them warm. If the plant gets too cold, it will die, right? Just like any living thing. If it gets too cold, it will die. So somebody is protecting these plants by putting plant clothes on the plants, right? Actually, don't say plant clothes, it's just kind of a funny thing, but it looks like these straw uh, over uh, coverings, these straw coverings are on top of the plants to keep them warm and healthy. Okay, um, we have another word here. Carry means to take something from one place to another. Carry, if I carry these pens from here to over there, I'm carrying them. What are these butterflies doing? And there's a bee here too. What are these insects doing? Here's a little ladybug. Ladybugs are cute, aren't they? They're very cute. But these animal, these insects, sorry, these insects are carrying pollen from the plant, one plant to another plant. They're helping those plants to live. So to carry is to take something from one place to another. Okay, let's move on. We have ground. Ground is the earth where plants live. So this is an interesting shaped piece of ground. Of course, it's supposed to look like the earth, right? But basically, plants grow from the ground. Now remember, not all ground is good for plants. We need soil. This looks like good soil. But plants don't really grow well in sand in the desert. That's why there are no plants in the desert. So this is good ground 
for uh, plants to grow. It's the earth where plants live, in the ground, in the ground. Lesson 3. What Plants Need to Grow Sunlight The light from the sun. It helps plants to grow. Air The gases that surround the earth. We cannot see air, but it is everywhere. Water a liquid that is necessary for life. Water moves food to the parts of a plant. Space The area available for use. If there is space, a plant can grow big and strong. Soil Soil is where plants grow. Soil is the top part of the earth. Warmth. Warmth is the state or quality of being warm. Carry. To take something from one place to another. Ground. The earth where plants live. Let's start with the first group here. Now this group is probably uh, maybe your favorite group. It's my favorite group because we human beings are part of this type, of part of this group. And this group is mammal, okay? So what is a mammal? A mammal is an animal with hair that gives birth to live babies, okay? Well, these two panda bears, I don't think they're, neither one of them is a baby, but uh, a mammal has two distinctive characteristics. One, it has hair. That's the first characteristic. The second characteristic gives birth to live babies. What does it mean, live babies? In other words, when a mammal gives birth, the baby is alive, it's moving. It's not like an egg. When a, uh, an animal gives birth to an egg, the animal isn't you know, moving yet, right? It has to break out of the shell, so it's not really a live baby. Mammals give birth to live babies. The baby is moving right away after birth. So those are the two uh, characteristics or two unique features of mammals, okay? And we can see many different types of mammals. Oh yeah, what's the second group? The second group is reptile, reptile. And this is an example of a reptile, a kind of ugly but also a little bit scary example of a reptile. What is this? Looks like an alligator or a crocodile, right? So. How do we describe reptiles? How are they different from mammals? Here we have a reptile is an animal that lives on land. It lives on land. It, it, it can go in the water as this alligator does, but it lives on land normally and it has dry skin. If you think of most reptiles, well, this guy just took a bath, right? He's just coming out of the water, so his skin is wet right now. But if you look at most reptiles, like lizards or snakes, their skin is dry, okay? So they live on land and they have dry skin. Let's look at a video of a typical reptile. Do you know what type or what animal this is? If you guessed iguana, right, it is an iguana. This is an iguana, right? It's a, it's a fairly large lizard, right, as lizards go. Let's take a look at it as it's, ooh, as it's moving around here. Okay, he's kind of an interesting fellow. He's kind of a little bit active. But you can see the way he's moving around. By the way, another interesting thing about reptiles is that they are cold-blooded. It means, cold-blooded means that they cannot regulate their own temperature. They are cold-blooded. Mammals are warm-blooded. It means mammals, we generate our own heat from our bodies, but reptiles cannot generate their own heat. They need a lot of sunlight, and look, he's on the rocks here, these white rocks. These white rocks are uh, giving off heat, 
So he's probably seeking warmth in the sunlight. Reptiles need that heat to, to warm their bodies. Okay, if they don't have it, then they can get in trouble. Okay, so that's another difference between mammals and reptiles. Okay, let's move on. Sometimes we can see uh, another type of animal. You might think, hey, that looks like a reptile, but it's not a reptile. It's an amphibian. Amphibian. Remember, PH sounds like F. Amphibian. Amphibian. So, an amphibian is any animal that can live both, that's the important point, both on land and in water. So, a frog can live on the land, no problem, but it can also live in the water, no problem. It's amphibian, it can do both things. Amphibians have smooth, wet skin. Before we saw the picture of the reptile and of course the iguana, if, uh, I'm sorry, the picture of the alligator and then the iguana, if you touched the alligator's skin or the iguana's skin, you'd find it's, it's rough, it's not smooth, and it, it's dry, especially the iguana would have dry skin. It's, and it would be hard to, to do this, you have to be careful. It wouldn't feel very good. It's very rough and a little, little uh, uh, difficult on your fingers, a little, uh, maybe hurt your fingers a little bit. But if you pet a frog, and it's kind of slimy, right? But it has smooth skin and it's wet. So that's a, a good difference. Amphibians are wet, reptiles are dry. You could think of that in that way. But anyway, this is an amphibian. Let's take a look at a video of a frog. This is a, a little frog here. He's sitting in the grass and he looks, he looks like he's just hanging out. Doesn't look too, uh, too interesting. Oh, what's going on? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, wow. That's pretty cool. That frog just jumped up, okay? So frogs, you know, of, of course, you know, they, they jump up like that. They've got the big long legs, but they're amphibians, kind of a neat frog, right? Yeah, I hope he's, he's not on my head, is he? Okay, okay. Well, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, also we can group animals as birds. Birds are a group of their own because birds, if you think about it, they're unique, right? What is a bird? A bird has feathers. Right? It has many feathers. We can see the feathers here. And two wings. One, two wings. Most birds can fly. That's another key point right there. Most. It doesn't mean all. It means most. Of course, when we think about birds, we think, oh, they can fly. But not all birds can fly. Think about in Africa. There's a really big bird that can't fly. It's called an ostrich, right? An ostrich. An ostrich is a bird but it can't fly. It can run, but it can't fly. So most birds can fly, not all birds can fly. So these are birds, but all birds have feathers, all birds have wings, okay? So those are the unique characteristics of birds. Okay, what's next? Insects. Insects are very, very, very common in the animal kingdom. We may not think much about insects. We may not think uh, you know, insects are very uh, great animals, but there are actually uh, a lot of insects. Insects are probably, and the different species of insects are probably more than other types of animals. Insects are probably the most common type of animal in the earth. But we don't think about them because they're so small, right? But what are insects? An insect, this is a good picture of an insect, this is a stag beetle, right? Very impressive looking uh, creature, but remember, it's, he's not that big, he's, he's a small guy. Uh, an insect is a small creature with three body parts, it has three body parts, uh, and six legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six legs. Insects have no bones. There are no bones inside of an insect. The insect gets its strength for its body in its shell. Insect shells, insect bodies are hard shell-like uh, uh, structures. So insects don't have bones on the inside like animal, like uh, mammals or birds or reptiles do or even if amphibians, okay? So this is an example of a stag beetle, all right? Let's take a look. Here's another, another type of beetle here and he's crawling along a leaf. You can see his head, you can see the middle section, you can see the abdomen, and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six legs. He's 
kind of having a hard time crawling over this leaf. But that's a good example of an insect. Insects have three body parts and six legs. That's how you know it's an insect. Okay? So, bye-bye, beetle. Okay. Okay, so another large group of animals, fish, right? Fish, of course, live under the water. And uh, again, we don't really encounter fish too often because we don't live in water. But if we go swimming at the coast or if we go diving, snorkeling, we can see fish under the water. And they're very colorful, very interesting creatures. What is a fish? How do we describe fish? A fish is a creature that lives in the water. It breathes through its gills. You can see the gills right here, this opening on the side of the head right here. Uh, there's oxygen in the water, but uh, we, can't, we can't get that oxygen because we don't have gills. But a fish has gills, so it can push that water through and take out the oxygen, and that's how a fish breathes underwater. If you take a fish out of water, it can't breathe because gills don't work in air. Okay. So, fish use fins and a tail to swim. So the tail here and the fins, they use that to swim through the water. Okay. So, next, let's take a look at a unique part of certain fish and also reptiles on their skin. You know, different types of animals will have different characteristics to them. One interesting characteristic is a scale. What is a scale? A scale is a section of the skin on a fish or reptile. You can see this pattern. This pattern is very close up. We're looking very closely at the skin of a fish or a reptile. Their skin looks like this. It's in, uh, it's in scales, and these scales sometimes will, will flake off, right? We have smooth skin. We cannot see scales on our skin, only fish or reptiles. So fish or reptiles only have scales, this type of skin. Very interesting. It, it protects them, uh, and it's, an, it's a different style. It's a different uh, type of skin or covering for the animal. When we talk about animals, we can talk about their young, right? The young of animals, okay? So as we see here, we have mama sheep, right? And we have two baby sheep, right? Lambs. Um, this would be one, uh, one uh, baby sheep. We could say young. So actually, both of them are young. Young is non-count. We say the young of a sheep, the young of a horse. So young is the babies of animals, right? So when we say young, we're talking about the babies of animals. Okay. Now, before I talked, we talked a little bit about uh, uh, insects. When we talked about insects, we said insects have no bones. Insects do not have bones. Now we're talking about bones. A bone, what is a bone? Uh, this is a very strange looking bird, isn't it? <laughs> Actually, it's, a, it's an illustration. It's an artist's uh, drawing of the inside of a bird. Normally we don't see this, right? But if you could take away the skin and the organs, this is what you're left with. You're left with the skeleton, the hard bony uh, structure inside an animal that supports the body, right? If you didn't have the skeleton, right, it, it would, there's no support. It would just, you know, fall apart. It would be, there's nothing, there's nothing to be able to move around, right? So a bone is a hard, that's the most important thing of a bone is that it's hard, a white part that makes up the frame of the body. So the bones make up the frame of the body and they support the organs and the skin and everything else that the animal needs to survive. So the bones uh, make up the frame of the body, okay? And not just for birds, but also for us and mammals and many other types of animals, okay? So this is the bone. Bones are very important, okay? Also, it's good for you to drink milk to help your bones, right? You need a lot of calcium because that's what bones need to grow. Uh, and you can find milk in uh, you can find calcium in milk. So drink a lot of milk, it will help your bones. Okay. Now, some animals, remember we talked before about mammals? Mammals give birth to live young, but not all animals give birth to live young. I gave the example of eggs. Here we have a couple of eggs. This one is the normal egg that you, you, may, you might eat this one for breakfast. This one is a strange egg, looks a little bit different. And is it broken? 
I hope not. What's going on here? It looks like it's cracked, right? Probably the baby inside this egg is cracking the inside. It wants to come out, okay? So this is a different style of birth. Mammals don't lay eggs. But what is an egg? How can we describe an egg? An egg is a round shell, usually round, not, maybe not perfectly round, but roundish. It's a round shell where a baby bird or reptile grows. So it's not just birds, it's also reptiles. Reptiles also lay eggs and they will come out. Uh, fish also lay eggs too, by the way. So uh, birds or reptiles will lay an egg and the young uh, the young bird or the young reptile will grow inside that egg and then after a while they'll crack and they'll come out of the egg. Okay? Lesson 4 Types of Animals Mammal a mammal is an animal with hair that gives birth to live babies. Reptile A reptile is an animal that lives on land and has dry skin. Amphibian Any animal that can live both on land and in water is an amphibian. Amphibians have smooth, wet skin. Bird. A bird has feathers and two wings. Most birds can fly. Insect. An insect is a small creature with three body parts and six legs. Insects have no bones. Fish. A fish is a creature that lives in water and breathes through gills. Fish use fins and a tail to swim. Scale. A scale is a section of the skin on a fish or a reptile. Young. Young is the babies of animals. Bone. A bone is a hard white part that makes up the frame of the body. Egg. An egg is a round shell where a baby bird or reptile grows. So let's begin. Our first word that we're going to be talking about, wow, look at this. This is a very proud animal, right? Uh, this, of course, is a uh, chicken, right? A type of chicken. It's a male chicken, so we say it's a rooster, right? But on uh, chickens, on birds, what is the skin? What Do they have hair? No, they have these interesting looking things that we call feathers. Feathers. Sometimes you can pluck a feather out. A long time ago, they used feathers to write with, right? They, they took out a feather, put it in ink, and that was your pen, right? So that's a, a long time ago. Thankfully, we don't use those anymore, but uh, because the birds need them, right? <laughs> the birds need feathers, of course. So the birds have feathers. A feather is one of the many soft, thin parts that cover a bird's body that cover a bird's body. Birds don't have hair, right? We have hair, but birds have feathers, and that keeps them warm. It also makes them look uh, different ways uh, for different purposes. Of course, different uh, birds might have very beautiful feathers, like a peacock, to attract, you know, a, a male peacock wants to attract female peacocks, you know, so wow, look at me. Sometimes birds will have feathers that expand if they're afraid or they're, or they're trying to warn other birds away, right? The feathers will make them look bigger. And of course, feathers keep birds warm and dry uh, when it's wet. Okay, so these are feathers, a unique part of uh, a bird. Also a unique part of a bird is a wing. The only animals that have wings, of course, are birds. And this is a nice picture of an owl, right? And of course, we can see his wing stretching out here and all the feathers on the wing. And of course, the feathers are very light and they spread out. They also help the bird, in this case, the owl, to fly along. So a wing is the part of a bird that helps it fly. 
birds have two wings, right? If you think about it, birds don't have arms, right? They have wings instead. Their arms are actually wings and they use them. Birds also have two feet. So, you know, birds have, they have the right amount of limbs, but their arms are wings. Imagine if you had wings for arms, right? You could be able to fly. That would be neat. Anyway, this is what birds have. Birds have wings. These wings allow the bird to fly. Let's move on. We're also talking about birds again. A unique part about birds, birds have a beak. We don't have beaks, thank goodness, because that would be very difficult to kiss your mom, right? And when you go uh, to bed at night. So that would, ah, that would be very, very tough. But anyway, a beak is, uh, uh, it's like, it's not a bone. It's like a shell, really. It's like a, a hard part of the bird. And what does it do? It's a hard and pointed part of a bird's mouth. Now, different birds will have different shapes and different sizes of beaks, right? A bird uses its beak to find food in the ground. Sure, some birds do do that, right? Uh, this bird has a long beak so it can stick its mouth into the ground to find an insect, maybe a worm, and pull it out. Some birds have long beaks so that they can uh, drill a hole in a tree, a woodpecker, duck, 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 right? He, he hits the tree, he makes, he's looking for insects, uh, maybe uh, he can also um, find food inside of the tree. Now, the owl doesn't have a really long beak, but the owl has a sharp beak for being able to catch like mice or small animals on the ground, okay? So different birds have different sizes and different shapes to their beaks, and they use them for many different things, okay? So let's move on. Now we're getting away from birds. We're looking at a different type of animal. This is, of course, a mammal. More specifically, it's a sheep. And we're looking at specifically this part of the sheep. This is fur. Now, of course, uh, fur on a sheep is very important for human beings. We use that fur, right? The sheep farmers will shave the sheep. Poor sheep, they'll look the, you know, they don't have any fur on afterwards, but we use that fur to make wool coats. So we may use it to make warm sweaters or use it in coats in our clothing. Fur is the soft, thick hair that grows on the body of mammals. Fur keeps an animal warm, right? Fur doesn't grow on all animals or mammals, right? We are mammals. We don't have fur, right? We have hair. We have hair. We don't call that fur, right? We just call that hair. But many mammals have fur. When the, when the hair covers their whole body, then we call that fur, okay? So this is fur for mammals. Okay, all animals, our next word is lung. All animals have lungs, right? Lungs are very important to an animal. If it doesn't have a lung, it can't breathe. We cannot see the lung, right? The lung is in, in the inside of the body. It's inside the body. We can't see it. But what is a lung? A lung is an organ. Organs are inside the body, usually in the torso, right? In the upper part of the body for mammals. We have many organs in our body. We can't see them, they're inside. A lung is an organ that helps some animals breathe. So if you do that, if you breathe in and out, you're using your lungs. And most animals, all animals have lungs, okay? So let's take a look at the next one, gill. Now, a gill is something that a fish will use to breathe underwater, right? We have lungs, right? We can breathe the air because we're not in water. But fish do not live outside of water. They live in water. How can they breathe in the water? Well, of course, the water has oxygen in it. So fish will be able to get that oxygen using their gills on the side of their uh, uh, heads. If you look at a fish, you can see the gills going like this, and they're breathing that way. A gill is one of the openings on the side of a fish's head, right over here. Gills help a fish breathe underwater. So you see the fish moving around in your aquarium, in your fish tank, or if you go to see, if you see them on television, or if you go diving, snorkeling in the water, you can see fish breathing underwater. Pretty amazing. 
Okay, let's move on to the next part. Uh, skin. We all have skin, right? We have, we have soft uh, skin, right? An alligator has hard, thick, tough skin. Skin is the layer of tissue that covers the body. So it's actually uh, the largest tissue on most animals. Uh, it's the largest tissue. Do you know that your skin is usually dead cells? It's cells of your body that are dead. Ugh, think about that. We're carrying around a lot of dead cells on our skin, but that's what skin is. Now, skin is different for many different types of animals. Like I said, an alligator or a crocodile will have tough, thick skin. Usually people have soft, smooth skin, right? So different skins for different types of animals, depending on you know what they're doing. Uh, alligators live out in the wild. They live in uh, rivers. They live uh, in places where they need a thick, tough skin. We don't need a thick, tough skin. If we need to, we can just wear clothing over our skin. Now, let's talk about some other words associated with different body tar types. Smooth, right? What does smooth mean? Smooth means flat. So if something is smooth, it's flat without any rough areas. I just said human beings have soft, smooth skin, right? Alligators don't have smooth skin. It's rough. It's got a lot of bumps on it. It's not flat and it's not uh, uh, easy or nice to touch. It's rough, okay? If you look at your dog, if you have a dog, you know, you can pet your dog. The dog's fur is very smooth. It's very nice and soft. It's pretty flat, and you can uh, run your hand along it. You wouldn't want to run your hand along an alligator because it's very bumpy. It's not smooth. So smooth, flat, without any rough areas. Okay. Now, hair. Now, we have a picture of a dog here. Sure, a dog, we can call this fur. A dog has fur, but fur is made of hair, a lot of hair. Now, remember, humans don't have fur. <laughs> don't say, uh, when you're talking about a person, don't say that that person has a lot of fur. If they have hair on their arms, that's just hair on their arms. Don't call it fur. Only animals have fur. So, this dog has a lot of hair, we can call it fur, but we can also call it hair. In fact, he has so much hair, we can't even see his eyes, right? He's very cute, though. Cute dog. Hair. Hair is thin, fine parts on the skin of a person or an animal. So, yes, we have hair. Dogs, animals have hair. But only animals have fur. People do not have fur, okay? Let's move on. Feed. So, feed, what does that mean, feed? Feed means to give food to a person or an animal. However, true, you can feed a person, but feed is usually uh, associated with animals, right? Uh, when animals feed, and that's what's going on here, this is an interesting picture, this is mama cat, right? And many baby kittens. What are the baby kittens doing? Are they tickling mom? <laughs> They're tickling her? No, they're, they're getting milk from mom. So mom is giving her babies milk. The kittens are feeding right now. So mom looks like she's protecting her babies, right? She's giving them some milk. So feed means to give food to a person or animal. Actually, we have a good video. We have a nice video of a cat. Here's mama cat, and here's one of her babies. <laughs> Look at this baby's uh, feet are splayed out like that. That's pretty cute. Let's see at the video. As you can see, mom is just sitting there and uh, the little baby kitten is, is taking the milk. Well, it's a very nice mom, right? She's licking her baby, making sure that she's comfortable and she's getting enough food to grow into a big cat. Okay, so that's an example of to feed. Lesson 5. Body Parts of Animals. Feather. A feather is one of the many soft, thin parts that cover a bird's body. Wing. A wing is the part of a bird that helps it fly. Birds have two wings. Beak. A hard and pointed part of a bird's mouth. 
A bird uses its beak to find food in the ground. Fur. Fur is the soft, thick hair that grows on the body of mammals. Fur keeps an animal warm. Lung. A lung is an organ that helps some animals breathe. Gill. A gill is one of the openings on the side of a fish's head. Gills help a fish breathe underwater. Skin. Skin is the layer of tissue that covers the body. Smooth. Smooth means flat, without any rough areas. Hair. Hair is thin, fine parts on the skin of a person or an animal. Feed. Feed means to give food to a person or an animal. Different kinds of habitats. Now that's an interesting word there, habitats. Actually, let's get into that right away with the word habitat. So habitat is a place where animals live, where an animal lives. So a habitat is talking about you know, the environment, the surrounding. If an animal lives in a forest, that's a type of habitat. Or if an animal lives in a desert, that's a different type of habitat. Right? We talk about us, you know, do you like to live in the city? That's a type of habitat. Or in the country? That's another type of habitat. So there are many different kinds of habitats. And in this lesson, we are going to talk about different habitats and different words to describe the habitats about where animals live. Okay, let's take a look at a video of a special kind of habitat. What can we say about this habitat? We can see this bird here. Where does this bird live? We can see water here, looks like maybe a river or a lake. We have a lot of vegetation, plants growing in the background. Uh, so we can see that this bird here, this is mama bird, right? These are her babies. What is mama bird doing? She really seems to be caring more about her appearance than about her babies. Uh, she's really going, going uh, fixing her feathers or maybe she has an insect in there and she's trying to get that insect, I don't know. But anyway, obviously these birds live here. This is their home. This is where the babies hatch. That's where they're growing up. This type of habitat with all the water around and the plants and the, uh, the trees, we could call that a wetland, okay? It's a wetland. Uh, there's another type of habitat we can talk about and we can see, well, this is a very uh, special looking type of forest here. A forest, of course, is an area where there are many trees, okay? So in a forest, you can't really see very far because there's so many trees. A forest is an area with many trees and plants, but really it's trees that make a forest. Now this is kind of a special forest. This is probably in Northern California where we have these huge redwoods, okay? It could also be in Australia. They also have very uh, tall trees in Australia. I'm not sure where this picture is from, but this is kind of a special forest, isn't it? We don't really have this kind, these kinds of big trees in most forests. Most forests have the smaller trees like this one over here. But a forest is just an area with a lot of trees. Different types of animals will live in different types of habitats. Forests, uh, we'll talk about what kinds of animals live in these different areas later on. Okay, so we looked at forests, but there's another type of forest that's a little special, right? It's called a rain forest, right? A rain forest, of course, is different from a normal forest because of rain. It rains a lot, right? So a rain forest is a forest in an area where it rains a lot. So this type of forest, people can also say it's a jungle, right? Jungle especially if the jungle is in a hot, humid area. That's a jungle. We find jungles in uh, South America and Africa. If it's further north, right, further north, but it still rains a lot, we can still call it a rainforest. Maybe not so much a jungle because the jungle is really hot, but it's a rainforest. And this is a special area 
where it gets a lot of rain, the plants are really, really thick, and there's a lot of different animals that live in rainforests. The amount of animals and types of animals that live in a rainforest is really great. A lot of different variation, a lot of different species live in a rainforest. Let's take a look at a video here. We can see a video here of a rainforest, and we can kind of see, you know, this, this vapor. What is this stuff? This is vapor. It's like mist. It's so humid there that the water is in the air. We can see it moving around on top of the water here. We can see very, very green, very, very dense, uh, very thick uh, plant growth. And that's what a rainforest is like. So lots of water, lots of uh, 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 plant growth, and it's hot and it's very humid. There's a lot of moisture in a rainforest. Okay, we'll move on. This is a completely different type of habitat. On one side we have rainforest, lots of rain. On the other end, the opposite end, we can have a desert, no rain, or very, very, very little rain. And we call this, of course, a desert. We can see a picture of a desert here. Well, one of the more famous animals that live in a desert is a camel, right? Camels live in deserts because they can store their food and water in the hump on their back so they can survive for a long time without water. And a desert is a place that gets little or no rain. So uh, camels are adapted to, to live in the desert. They, are, they can live in the desert because they have adapted to the climate in the desert the fact that there is little or no rain there. Okay, so that's a desert. Oh, uh, wow, this is very exciting. We have dolphins here, right? And the dolphins live in the ocean. Of course, you know what the ocean is. An ocean is a very large area of salt water. Salt water, very important. Because if it's fresh water, it's not an ocean, okay? Fresh water if you have a large body of fresh water, that is a lake, not an ocean, okay? A large body of fresh water is a lake, like you have in America, you have the big lakes, uh, the Great Lakes. Uh, they are fresh water, not salt water. If it's salt water, we call it an ocean. Now, these uh, dolphins live in the ocean. Uh, of course, they live in the water. Uh, they're just having fun. That looks, like that, that looks like a lot of fun right there, doesn't it? They're just coming out of the water. But, of course, they live most of their lives in the water. Okay, very exciting picture. That's an ocean. Okay, we also have a very special type of habitat, and that is called the Arctic. The Arctic. The Arctic is an icy and cold place near the North Pole. The Arctic is in the North Pole. Antarctic is the South Pole. But we are talking about the Arctic here. Polar bears live in the North Pole. Polar bears don't live near the South Pole. Similar conditions, North Pole and South Pole, right? But in the Arctic, it's special. There is no land under the ice. No land. It's just ice. That ice never melts. Oh, some of it does, sure, but most of it never melts right at the top of the North Pole. So this polar bear is walking on ice. Underneath the ice is water, no land. That's how cold it is, that the ice stays frozen all year round. Now, of course, it, it shrinks in the summertime and it grows in the wintertime. It does go like this. So some ice does melt, but a lot of it never melts. Okay, so that's very interesting. If we take a look, it's very cold up there. Can you imagine what life is like for the polar bear there? Does he look cold? He doesn't look that cold. Actually, he's kind of big, right? Polar bears are, are big animals. Uh, but look at the fur on that, on that polar bear. He has a really big coat, a really thick fur of hair. And that's what keeps him warm. Even though he lives up in the Arctic, you know, he stays warm because he's got such a good coat of hair on. He stays warm there. He doesn't look cold. He's just kind of like shuffling along like, a, like ordinary bears do. You know, and they usually eat seals under the ice. That's what they hunt. Okay, it was too cold in the Arctic. Let's move on to a wetland. A wetland is a special type of habitat because it's a mixture of water and plants or a little bit of land. A wetland is an area covered with water 
and plants. So wetland, sure, there's water there, but the land is not too far underneath the water. The water is not very deep. The water is usually shallow in a wetland for most of the wetland. And you could probably walk out there. The water would come up to your, your legs or maybe your hip or your waist up here. But you could probably walk out there because the plants are just are growing in the ground just under the surface of the water. And this is a wetland. A wetland is very, very important for many birds. Birds who will fly by, they will come down here. And this is a very, very good habitat for many types of birds like ducks and geese and swans. Uh, birds will come here and they'll be able to swim around, find food, and it's a very good habitat. Not just for birds, but for many other types of animals. And a lot of animals will live in this type of habitat. Okay. Another type of habitat is a grassland. Now grassland, of course, there's, there's lots of grass, but there's no water right here, right? If there's water, it's under the ground, right? You will not get wet if you go walking along a grassland. But another point about a grassland, there are no trees. So it's not a forest, it's open grassland. You can see for very far. Grassland is a large, flat area with a lot of grass. So the characteristics about grassland, no trees, it's flat, so you don't have mountains or, or hills, uh, and it's large, it's a large area, it's flat, and it has a lot of grass. What lives there? Well, in the American West, a long time ago, buffalo uh, lived on the grassland, antelope live in the grassland, deer live in the grassland. Lots of different animals will come by and eat the grass, okay? And they can roam and run around free. Uh, uh, without any barriers like trees or mountains or hills. Okay, so that's a grassland. Now, we also have a word here. This is not a habitat, but it's, it's kind of, um, uh, it's a verb to cover. To cover something means to give it shelter and make it safe. So what kind of animal is this? It's kind of a kyupji animal, right? Cute. It's a cute little crab here, and this is a special type of crab. It's called a hermit crab, a hermit crab. So this animal is a hermit because he lives alone. He's a hermit crab and they're very cute. You probably have seen these before. Maybe you've had one as a pet before. I don't know. But the crab will, will go inside the shell and when it gets too big, what does he do? He leaves that shell and he picks up another shell and goes into that, right? So hermit crabs are very interesting. They cover their bodies with a shell made by a different animal, right? You can't really call this a habitat, but it's, it's just a, a shell that covers the animal. A habitat is the area where an animal lives. This is just a shell. It covers the hermit crab. So some animals will cover themselves with things in the environment, like a hermit crab. Very, very smart uh, little crab, isn't he? Okay. Lesson 6. Where Animals Live Habitat A habitat is a place where an animal lives. Forest A forest is an area with many trees and plants. Rainforest a rainforest is a forest in an area where it rains a lot. Desert A desert is a place that gets little or no rain. Ocean An ocean is a very large area of salt water. Arctic The Arctic is an icy and cold place near the North Pole. Wetland A wetland is an area covered with water and plants. Grassland Grassland is a large flat area with a lot of grass. Cover To cover something means to give it shelter and make it safe. 